So we were just singing some children's songs. We were <laughs> from days of yore. Days of yore. And uh, yeah, this is this is another yet another episode of the boys the boys podcast. Boys, it's like those bands. Like like is it is it the Strokes or oh, is it Strokes? Is it the Ramones? It's just Ramones, but you people always say the Ramones in reference because it's more grammatically it sounds better. What are some others? I mean, the, it's the Beatles, obviously. Uh -huh. The Doors. See, Strokes is just Strokes. Okay, the Hives no, were the Hives. I think Strokes is the Strokes. I think the old classic logo that looks like the, was it the Magna Cigarettes? Yeah. I think it has a the It does in have it. the in it. You're right. The Hives. Mm hmm The, the. The, the. Um, but yeah. So speaking of children's songs, mm -hmm. I was driving, well, Eric and I were driving to dinner the other night, and I was singing a little song that she had never heard before. And it got me to thinking, so I put it on the podcast list, and um, I'll just sing you a little bit of sure. it, if that's fine. It's it's kind of long, so bear with me here. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, it goes like this. Old MacDonald sitting on a fence. Okay, let me start over. I already fucked it up. Old MacDonald sitting on a fence, beating his meat with the monkey wrench. Missed his meat and <laughs> hit his balls. Pissed all over his overalls. Second verse. <laughs> Ran in the house so goddamn fast. Slammed his dick up grandma's ass. Grandma said, God bless my soul. Stick your dick up your own asshole. Third verse. Third, <laughs> third and final verse. No chorus. When I die, bury me. Hang my balls on the cherry tree. <laughs> when they're ripe, take a bite. Tell me if they taste all right. <laughs> And scene. Uh, now, where have you heard this? This was a this was a classic children's tune yeah. okay. from the play, the playground and yard of Chalk to, or no, excuse me, Schwartz Elementary yeah, School. It did not make its way to JGI or IME. I didn't know it was not there. I sang it for Erica, and she she was like, "I've never heard that in my life, and I think you just made that up." <laughs> I didn't though. If you did, it'd be really, really clever. Did you have songs or sayings or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, there are all, there are sorts of them, but they were, I, you know, you come to find out they were, I mean, who knows where they, how kids got a hold of them, but like, you know, there's the Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin Laid an Egg. The Batmobile Lost, lost a Wheel. The Joker Got Away. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a, that was a biggie. Yeah, it was a that was a biggie. One. I, I want to say that maybe I made up the third verse of the song I just maybe, sang. Maybe, maybe you did. Because it is kind of different. But it got me to thinking, you know, is somebody, somebody out there, somebody that, somebody out there had to have heard that song or some sort of like variation of the, of the, well, sure. It, it's uh, it's got, it's got that sing songy vibe. It does. Uh, you're basing it off of a classic song of old McDonald had a farm. Right. Well, now old McDonald's getting into some other shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. And slamming his dick up grandma's ass. <laughs> sure. Which <laughs> as I was singing it just mm -hmm. now, I'm like, that's really raunchy for a child to sing. Yeah, it's, it is. It's I mean, really raunchy for an adult to sing. Yeah. Well, there's like my sister and her friends would do like the jump rope thing and they would do those jump rope songs and the. Uh, what the, if you disconnect me, I'll kick you in behind the refrigerator. There was a piece of glass, Miss Susie shut upon it and broke her little ass. Ask me no more questions. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Really good hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. That was like Beastie that Boys shit. That's really all I heard. I never heard anything real raunchy. Like, the, the, I know like there ass, were other Ass ramming. <laughs> <laughs> I know there were others and I'm trying. I should have thought about this before I hit record, but that's just how we do it here. That's how we do. Uh, Off man, the cuff. There was another one about... Oh man, something about let's see. Oh, something about Lay's potato chips. Damn it, I can't remember. That's brand specific. <laughs> oh, I got another one, and it might be even more raunchy. So okay. I'm sorry. You know, NSFW. You might wanna... man. Yeah, I mean, we're really pushing the envelope yeah. here. But uh, let's see. It was motherfucking titty sucking two ball bitch. Your mother's in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, don't don't interrupt me. I, I had a nice flow going there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Motherfucking titty sucking two ball bitch. Your mother's in the kitchen cooking strawberry shit. Your brother's in jail. Your father's in hell. Your sister's on the corner singing pussy for sale. Isn't that two live crew? Is it? I think it's two maybe, live crew. Is it a hybrid? Maybe. Uh, well, may, okay, maybe Maybe I had a friend who had an older brother that told him that was a children's tune. Uh, could be. This might be the most curse words we've said in the intro for, ever. For sure. Sure. And I feel bad. We should play uh, Blink-182's... Uh, Seven words you can't say on television. Is that what it is? Let's do it right now. Okay. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turn, and twat. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now it's now it's officially yeah. the worst. The worst. And we might be sued. And if we got Maybe. sued over that song, sure. I'm okay with it. Sure. Why not? So how's how's uh, how's it been going, dude? I've, I've been away. Uh, you have been away. You were in Nashville at my first time, and uh, for work, that was pretty cool. Um, man, good. It's, it's a really long weekend, man. These uh, we get uh, three day weekends at our employer, and it's it's a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. Blessing in that you get that extra day. A curse in that. What, what can you, that's a, that begs the question, what can you do? And the answer is, there's always something to do. And like I was talking to you today, maybe get out and do more things, like not just uh, wait around for a show or somebody meet up at a bar or go get lunch or dinner or buy shit, like maybe go. We have a bunch of state parks. We just go to a park, throw a tent down for 12 bucks a night and camp. Maybe do that. Right. Instead of nothing. So it's kind of been my thing. I think I'm going to start doing that, man. Doing a little more outdoorsy shit. It seems like, it seems like recently, especially when the weekend rolls around, I use that as like recovery time, Mm -hmm. like sleep in time, catch up on laundry, maybe do some stuff around the house. Light cleaning, yard mowing, that sort of thing. Yeah. Erica and I call it crack cleaning Mm -hmm. because we'll like wake up in the morning and like, you know, hang out for a while, hang out, hang out for a while. And then we'll just like clean the entire house. We'll put on some music mm-hmm. or a podcast or whatever. We've been listening recently. Um, I don't know if I've already mentioned this and if I did, sorry, but we've been listening to, there's this WFMU show where you can download the app and just like stream all their archives. And it's this old timey radio show. And this guy, all he, the only thing he plays on this radio show are like, you know, those old cylinders that play music, mm-hmm. like the old school, like mm-hmm. wax cylinders. It, it sounds super hipster because it, I guess it kind of is, but we listen to it because it's funny. Like it's yeah. like, uh, so it's, it's designed itself as a radio show. Yeah. Like, like 1920s radio show. No, 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 no. It's, it's a, it's a modern dude on a mic just like this introducing these songs. But then he just plays those songs and it's all like old, like, I mean, I'm guessing late 1800s, early 1900s old recordings that like huh. predate records predate acetate yeah yeah like all that stuff and it's it's so like refreshing to listen to because yeah. it's like i want to say it's wholesome but it's not because we listened to an episode the other day and it was like the black soldier went to war and died and his mammy was home it was like very racial but yeah. like kind of patriotic in the same sure. way different time back then well, there was a in there was a lot of music back in the day, I would say early 19, well, you know, whenever like recordings started becoming a thing, like uh, overtly sexual songs that were, had hidden me. Some of them were just blatant, like, we're going to have sex. Totally. And But some of them were like hidden meaning kind of thing, like be my backdoor baby, things like that. Uh, interesting, interesting shit. Well, and that, and that goes throughout the ages. Uh, when we were in Nashville this weekend, first time there, it was really cool, but kind of cringy too. Like, like yeah. I like '90s country, yeah, but like, mo- like pop country, like, dude. Modern country sucks. Yeah, it's terrible. It sucks. And it's I'm so not, formulaic. I'm not above it. I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if you like it, that's cool, whatever. But it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, my cup of Southern sweet tea. Mm. But we were talking about this very thing we were talking about like sexual lyrics mm-hmm. and the alan jackson song chattahoochee oh yeah it gets hotter than a hoochie's coochie okay i w- i looked up the lyrics mm-hmm. i always thought he said hoochie's coochie mm-hmm. he says hoochie coochie mm-hmm. which you know six of that half a dozen of the other whatever sure. but i thought he's a multi-million dollar sales mm-hmm. shatterer sure you know and he wrote the lyric, it gets hotter than a hoochie coochie. Now, was this just a cute little play on words or did he mean a vagina? I'm pretty sure he meant uh, a street worker's vagina parts. Like after a hot day. After of a hot day of working. Being slammed. Being slammed. It's hotter than a hoochie's coochie. Well, then at the end of, one, of, I think it's the second verse, perhaps. 
He says, let's see. So we fogged up the windows in my old Chevy. I was willing, but she wasn't ready. So I settled for a burger and a grape snow cone. I dropped her off early, but I didn't go home. Did he rape her? Did he break into her house? He dropped her off early. So he dropped her off, but he didn't go home. He said, okay, what I'm getting from that is they were, they were making out pretty hard. They fogged up the windows. Dry humping, probably fogging up the windows. He was ready to fuck. And, and she was not. So he, as a kind Southern gentleman, he goes, all right, I'll take you home, though. I'm well, getting a little hungry. That's right. He stopped. Got a burger and a snow cone. A grape snow cone. Grape snow cone. Dropped early. He didn't go home. You know what he did? He probably went out and party with the boys. Or maybe he okay. found another okay. hoochie coochie in order to get high. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wonder if the grape snow cone is rehipping all, though. Oh. What if he ate the burger, gave her the grape snow cone, so to speak, mm-hmm. dropped her off early... Went back out into his steamy windowed old Chevy, let the drugs kick in, went back in, raped her passed out body. Oh, that's that's deep and dark. I mean, should we uh, s- submit that to the uh, internet? I'm sure there's a fan theory of that already. We're gonna. Okay. We're, we're, we're submitting this to the internet by way of audio. Did Alan Jackson drug, Rufy, <laughs> drug and rape the girl in the song uh, went down yonder on the Chattahoochee? And was it her? hoochie coochie that it gets hotter than maybe that's what steamed up the windows the hot hoochie coochie. well she spread her legs and just steamed up the windows oh boy that's gross yeah this is a dark intro it's weird but um (laughs) i think it's fitting uh you know for taylor taylor benson episode 10 taylor is it 10 i think it's episode 10 dude we're at 10 that's great um yeah it's it was a great episode um you know i've known taylor for a long time but i haven't really talked to him a whole lot and Mm -hmm. It just keeps happening over and over. We get these people on who who it's like we're all kind of running in the same circle, but it's like mm-hmm. I feel like you know most people a little more than I do. I don't know sure. if it's from like the bartending or playing but shows, bartending, more. playing shows, playing yeah. bands with various people. Um, I'm not saying that you're a curmudgeon and, and don't talk to people. I'm I am a little more uh, socially active. And it probably stems from what we talked about with Vaughn in the previous podcast was feeling like a. a Freak on a leash. Freak on a leash. Corn reference number five thousand. Uh, no, feeling like you know, a uh, uh, alone in a crowded room. So you try to make people, you know, like you. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm a lot more, I guess, once I get socially lubricated, a lot more talkative. So I mean, that's my, my bartending is where I met a lot of people. Taylor, I met just through the quote scene, right? Playing in bands and stuff. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I had a long conversation with our coworker Aaron mm-hmm. uh, Pierce. Uh, one one night in the hotel, we were we were just talking, getting to know each other, and um, he we got into this subject about you know introverts and extroverts, mm-hmm. and I've always considered myself an extrovert mm-hmm. because I like to talk. Sure, um, anybody that knows me knows I like to talk. I mean, I'll listen. You know, I don't. I, I try not to talk over people. I I try to you know wait my turn to jump in and interject. But once I get going, I do like to talk, and that's why we're doing this. I, sure. I, I like to I like to talk. Um, I like to converse. Uh, sure. But it dawned on me that I think I might be an introvert. I could see that somewhat. I think I I, I don't think I coined this term, but I kind of like threw this word, <laughs> this term together. I think that I'm a, an assertive introvert. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Like when it is my turn. I'll like kind of like sure. talk and like be a little bit assertive. But I noticed this weekend we're walking around all these different places and like Aaron and maybe because he's younger, maybe because he's better looking, maybe because he's more talented. I don't know. But he would just talk to anyone mm-hmm. like somebody would walk by the booth or we would walk by a booth or, or walking down the street. And he'd just like strike up a conversation with anyone, not be afraid to be like, hey, what's going on? You know, mm-hmm. and I'm just kind of like tunnel vision looking forward. Yeah. If somebody talks to me, I'll, I'll talk your ear off if you want me to. Sure. But I don't think that introvert, extrovert really has to do with talking. No, it has to do with with how I guess how you perceive and how you go about uh, your, I guess, activities or persona that you present whilst in public, if you even get that far. I think like a true introvert is one who doesn't really want to be in public all that much, stays more to themselves. That's why I can see you as more, what, what did you call it? A assertive, assertive introvert, introvert, because you will go out, but not a lot. 
Right. I don't consider myself a homebody. It's just, and we talked about this as well. Mm-hmm. I, I don't consider myself a homebody, but I like to be home. Right. When I get off work, you know, I might run an errand or something after work, but I enjoy being home. Whether mm-hmm. whether Erica and I are hanging out or whether I'm doing my own thing, if I'm working on a guitar or drawing or playing on the computer, you mm-hmm. know, whatever it is, I like to be home. Yeah. And when when we were on this trip, uh, this weekend, this last weekend, I wasn't homesick as far as like missing home. Mm-hmm. I just missed being home. Like I missed literally like sitting on my couch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like I missed Erica, but it wasn't this like longing because I knew I was like, well, you know, in three more days I'll be home or whatever. Yeah. But I was like, you know, this city is cool. This event is cool. This is all cool. A great opportunity. Great opportunity. I learned so much. Sure. You know, I, I was worn out. It was great. But I couldn't wait to get home. And I don't want to say be bored because I don't get bored. I no. always find something to do. No, come home, put on gym shorts and a fucking Jared shirt and hang out and watch something dumb on TV for a couple hours and then go to bed. Totally. Totally. Veg out. It, it's nice, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyways, uh, this episode, this, this is a good, good long intro. See, yeah. we, need to, we need to do a podcast of just us because I, we're hit, we just hit 16 minutes. Sure. And this is like effortless. We can, we can totally do a, a vanilla cast. Let's and, do one soon. Let's do one soon. If, if, you, if you're listening and you think that we should do one or if you have anything that you'd like for us to talk about, that'd mm-hmm. be cool. Like, it's boyspodcast at AOL.com. Sure. Uh, send us a brief email with maybe a topic or, uh, you know, a reaction to something you've heard or something you liked, disliked, or whatever. Sure. And um, yeah. You got anything else to say? Uh, well, I, oh, actually, I do. Okay. Not, not to make this too long, but... Uh, so you kind of have a big decision that happened today. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I uh, I think I almost forgot about that. I uh, I applied to re-enroll in college to finish up my degree. I just haven't. I'm like a year, like two semesters away from getting my degree, and I think maybe internally, subconsciously, it was the fear of finishing it. You know what I mean? Like that's worse than not being good at it because i obviously was good i loved it i enjoyed going and it just got to that point where one was, couldn't financially afford it uh student loans were getting too much didn't want to do student loans anymore pell grants have all wiped out you know you're senior by that point and maybe that was a reason to go i think the second reason was fear of what do i do once i have it and that means you know i get a real job or does is the paper meaningless and you go through all that punk rock mindset everyone does like it's just paper it doesn't mean anything yeah it doesn't but it why am i paying this money for student loans for something i haven't really accomplished yet so basically what i decided fuck it i'm going to do it enrolled well applied and uh yeah i should hear back in a couple days about acceptance which i don't see why i wouldn't i'm a former student oh you're in dude yeah. you're in so yeah I'm, I'm excited to get that started and maybe um the thing is, it's been it's been like four years or so since I've gone, and my uh, my degree course then was uh, advertising because I guess I was good at it and, and enjoyed it. Um, had nothing to do with Mad Men at all. Um, I just wanted to do it, and now I'm at the point where I don't I don't really see myself in that field. Like it's kind of to me, I think it's kind of uh, evil, right? In a lot of ways. So I want to I want to get a different path. So I'm going to talk to them about finding another degree plan that i can use my credits with that either i can do like a secondary education degree just a generic liberal arts degree or whatever but i'm really excited about getting it started uh yeah i think you'd be an awesome teacher i do too i really do that was my my initial when i first enrolled in school way back in the day in like 2001 it was for secondary education and then i kept second guessing myself like it's not enough money like money was a thing and the more, the older I get, and the more, like, every time we go in public, Diana says this all the time, like, we don't want to have kids, but every time we're in public, kids fucking love me. Like, I don't know what it is. They look at me, they smile, they play with, like, they, and I interact with them really well. My niece and nephew are awesome. And it's, uh, yeah, maybe that that's more of the thing I really want to do is just do that. And uh, not like I'm going to change a life or anything, but just maybe help a right. little bit. Do something worth you know, putting out there. Totally. You know, not just being another face in an office somewhere. And it is scary. Like, you know, not, not, not to dwell on this too long, but we haven't really discussed this, but, um, you know, we've talked about doing big things mm-hmm. and, 
you know, I graduated college, which was cool, but I had that exact same fear. I have my degree. Now I have to make good on it. I have Mm -hmm. to do something with it. And that was very scary. Mm -hmm. And I lucked out. And, you know, I've said this a million times to you, but just to make it official, you know, you were the bridge to this new job I just started. And like I've said a million times, I appreciate it so much. Having started, though, and all the things that come with it, I'm scared to death, dude. Mm -hmm. Not because I can't do it. I know I can. But it's like, okay, now it's time to actually put your money where your mouth mouth is. This is more than a grade. A grade doesn't mean shit. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a project you're doing for, you know, with three other people in classes, like all on you and it's just your thing. But you have the talent and you've got the eye and the uh uh you know, passion for like I think you're gonna do great, man. The the stuff you've shot so far, the you know, small amount of things that you've gotten to do. But that's the thing, man. Like, I love that when you started and then thrown to the fire immediately. Oh, like big time. First day, first two days is, okay, get your office together. We created you this office, put that together. And then you're going to go to fucking Nashville and you're going to shoot some stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let me just give the quick breakdown to anyone that's listening that gives a shit. So I worked at a newspaper for, I worked two different newspapers for the span of 13 years, went back to school, finished my degree in audio video and basically a month to the day after I graduated, I had an opportunity to meet with uh, a local company. Um, that's a guitar effects company. And I don't know why I'm beating around the bush, but whatever. Um, you facilitated that meeting with mm-hmm. your boss. You work there. Yes. And basically we created a department mm-hmm. for in-house video, um, product demos, um, you know, artist relations stuff. Not, right. not, not even, no, not even artist relations. Let me, let me, let me back up. Um, like if an artist came through the office, I might sure. like film them playing a guitar or something sure. through, our, through our merchandise, um, technical videos, you know, uh, effects shootouts, like all kinds of cool stuff. And so I started a week, actually a week ago. And yeah. so the first day I had to set up my workstation, my computer, I built, I built my desk from the box and whatnot, got all my software installed. Second day I painted because we were kind of like dressing a set, so to speak. So mm-hmm. we can have like a comfortable place to shoot. And then I don't remember if it was the first day or the second day, but our boss came up to me and was like, Hey, there's a trade show in Nashville. Um, can you leave Wednesday through Sunday? <laughs> and at first I thought he was joking. Yeah. I was like, dude, like, I was messing with you. Yeah. I was yeah. like, okay, funny. Like, oh, no, okay. You got the new guy, but he was serious. And it was an amazing experience. We went to Nam, mm-hmm. which is just a huge. It's it, there's two Nams. There's the summer Nam in Nashville. There's a winter Nam in California, uh, Anaheim, California. The, the the one in Nashville is a little bit smaller, but it's it was still like staggeringly big for a, mm-hmm. for an Oklahoma rube like me. But yeah, I got like you said, I got thrown into the fire, mm-hmm. and and this week this last weekend was a huge learning experience. I'm so glad to be home, and it feels good actually. Like today it actually felt good to like be in my space yeah because i I, those first two days really didn't count because i was like painting and putting it together yeah together but today was like the first day that i actually sat down at the computer and like edited video and um composed some shit you know in garage band to use for backing tracks and stuff and i was like i was like dude now okay that's when i had that moment of like now it's really time to like yeah you have to create some content yeah. or i will not have this job for very long yeah so it's scary yeah but like you like you said i mean like i said i know i can do it mm-hmm. it's just like i was i was so in my comfort zone oh yeah you were, before you, yeah and you know if if you listen to these podcasts it's we keep talking about big things big mm-hmm. things this is my opportunity to do something big. Mm-hmm. So the last thing I want to do is like not do a good job or fuck it up or sabotage myself or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that just makes a million things go through my head. Oh yeah. You know, and but yeah, that, that's, that's my little story and that's enough about that. Um, <laughs> but everybody has their chance. And honestly, sure. dude, if I didn't go back to school and like, dude, I did, dude, I did the work, man. Yeah. Like I worked hard for like three years straight working full time, going to college you know, editing video pretty much like three nights a week, mm-hmm. not going out, which I'm not going to go out now, but I, I didn't go out then. Yeah. Um, I, I, I you know, did like intercession classes and all that stuff, right? Dude, I went year round. Mm-hmm. I went winter, summer, and then fall and spring, you know, and it was hard. And I'm, and I'm lucky to have the chance to go back and, and you're going to be lucky to have the chance yeah, yeah. to go back. Very, um, 
But yeah, dude, just do it, dude, and fucking get it over with. Because now, yeah. now that it's over, I'm like, holy shit, that was easy mm-hmm. in retrospect. Yeah. The hard shit's ahead. Yeah. But then I'm going to look back in six months and go, man, this is, this is cool. This yeah, is easy. It, it's all, it's all, you know, it's, it's getting your, I guess, you know, sea legs or whatever. You start somewhere and it's all, you know, new and, and, and kind of scary. But after a couple of weeks, man, you get used to it and it's a cool place. The, the people who work there are awesome. Just, uh, you know, be a good, good workflow for sure. It's, it's just interesting because this department is like, it's built around this new position. Mm-hmm. So there's really not any rules yet. We're like making the rules as we go. Yeah, that's awesome. That you're creating you're creating future jobs for new people. You know what I mean? Like right. expand it. It's it will expand. Yeah. Well, like you said, when I facilitated this meeting with you, we sat down with with the owner and we we talked about ex- the company expansion. Like it needs to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to have to happen eventually. Right. And it's it. I think it's just awesome that like you get to like spearhead that and you can direct it into what way it's going to be from here on out for the future of the company, you know, 20 years down the road. Right. And, and, you know, like I said, Josh, I, I really appreciate it. It's a, it's a huge opportunity for me. And I just, you know, I'm going to do my best yeah. and like, I, I've never phoned it in even at the place I was before that I was super comfortable. I always showed up. I did a good job mm-hmm. and you know, my, my old boss knew that and it was hard for me to leave, but I, I was almost like, mortified of the challenge Mm -hmm. but i knew and i think a lot of it had to do with this podcast man Mm -hmm. not to not to get cheesy but we kept preaching that do something big let's do something big well this is my chance and there you know i i had second thoughts for a while like should i do this or should i stay in the comfort zone yeah but i really and that comes back to the complacency thing you don't want to do that exactly and i feel like our conversations and, Mm -hmm. and and with the guests coming on it just kind of gave me a kick in the fucking balls to like yeah. do it. That's kind of why I uh, didn't start to go back to college. Is that same thing? Like, you know, it's not just going to happen. I'm, I'm going to have to make it happen. Yeah. Like, so I'm making it happen. Well, this intro has gone way too long. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just to wrap up, go to boyspodcast.com. It's a hub of all things boys. You can donate at our website. You can find all of our old episodes at our website. And thanks to those of you who have donated. Very much appreciated. Yeah, very awesome. Thank you so much. It really helps around here. Things wear out. We have to pay for bandwidth. Sure. And that just really helps us keep this going. Um, this is a labor of love, but, you know, that beautiful, those, those greenbacks, those sweet, sweet mm-hmm. greenbacks keep us moving forward and yeah um, boyspodcast.com and without further ado Taylor Benson this episode of boys is brought to you by fatbison.com Fat Bison Workshop is a tattooed guy in the middle of nowhere who makes custom hand carved hardwood signs built to order mention the boys podcast and get free shipping fatbison.com custom hardwood signs bold simple naturally beautiful this is a very special evening because this is. is our uh, tenth, tenth tenth episode. Damn, dub dubby ditch shit. Seems like uh, it's. I know this gets thrown around a lot, but it seems like only yesterday that we that we started this little. It really does. Thing. Um, but it was ten weeks ago. We've done it every week, which is pretty pretty good. If I pretty good, two months. I'd like to uh, pat myself on the back and yeah. pat you on the back. I'll pat you on the back too. But uh, yeah, we're here with Taylor Vinson. Hello. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get into some things. I want to start off by turning my reminders off on my phone. Is your phone off, by the way? I, yeah, I just, I just okay. did that when you Good. turned the switch. Yeah, I did. I was Good. looking at the list and then I just turned it off. So I have to tell you, um, last week, last Friday, I was off work and I had to get my car looked at. Um, I just started a new job this week and I my check engine light was on in my car. And I was like, well, I need to get this looked at before... I commit to this new job because sure. I can't just ask off at a new job. I want to make sure I get back and forth. So I go to the wonderful Hudeberg Chevrolet in glorious Midwest city, Oklahoma. Solid plug. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. So we, um, or we, I go early in the morning, um, 8 a.m. was the time the of the way. appointment, which why would I was going to say that? <laughs> why, why would I, why would I make the appointment for eight in the morning on my day off? no one's there it's what i do that's true you're in first in and out it's called being an adult robbie it's what we do okay true i get i get there at eight in the morning i go i, I drive into the bay mm-hmm. and I, I meet the gentleman who who's there to greet me and he's like i'm gonna take a look at your car 
He pops the hood. He asks what's wrong with it. I, I tell him, well, the check engine light's on. I don't know what's going on. He pops the hood. He reaches his hand to the back of the engine, wiggles a hose for about three seconds, and goes, okay, follow me over here. So he takes me over, and he's like, okay, that's going to be $150 for your diagnostic <laughs> fee. And I, I am generally a pretty friendly, nice guy, but I was just so pissed. I was like, no. I was like, fuck this. No way, dude. I was like, come on, man. I was like, you touched my car for three seconds. He's yeah. like, well, well, settle down, settle down. That will go into the repair. And I'm like, okay, so what is it? He's like, well, you have a hole in your, um, between your air filter and your engine, there's like a big hose that feeds air into the engine. Right. Well, apparently I had a hole in the back of that hose. Mm -hmm. So it ends up being $250. So the whole point of this story is, we, when he told me how much it was going to be, because, you know, they, they come and tell you the amount before they do any repairs. So, sure. you, you know, if, if you don't want to spend any more than that initial $140, I then realized that there are snacks. I realized that there is a plethora of breakfast items. There's coffees, mm -hmm. there's bottled waters, there's muffins. <laughs> I, I I've, I've been on this diet for like since February and I just broke it and taken a break from it. And I immediately just started hate eating. Just, I mean, I ate until I was bloated like the guy in seven. I was just eating donuts mm -hmm. and granola bars and uh, two Otis Spunkmeyer muffins. Jeez. I mean, if they're going to bend you over the table to touch a hose in your car, the least you can do is eat their delicious complimentary goods. That's true. It's the best kind of revenge, frankly. I like to say they bent me over the dinner table because all I did was just eat, eat, eat. And I was texting my wife the whole time. I was like, and I was texting her like, well, now I'm eating a banana. Now I'm eating a muffin. I'm going to have another muffin. <laughs> and then there was a point, and I'll wrap the story up, but there was a point where... I'm like going to going to the, the, the area to get more food. And I noticed that there's a sign that's like, please be courteous and leave snacks for the other guests. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck you. No yeah. chance. Yeah. No, it was great. Um, I probably ate close to 4,000 calories sitting there, but it was worth it. And, and I felt like it kind of took the sting off the money a little bit. Sure. You ever hate eating? Um, I don't usually, I'm not much of a hate eater, but I will stress eat very rarely. Like the planets have to align. Usually mm -hmm. I just like stress drink. But about once, maybe every six months, something will hit me the wrong way and I'll like be on my lunch hour or I'm on my day off and I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. Gonna go to Euro right now. Mm -hmm. Eat, sit in my car, finish whatever podcast or record it is. Mm -hmm. Eat the Euro in silence. It's like the, it's like a Prozac ad. It's awful. <laughs> but it, I get it. There's a there's a catharsis in like sitting down and being like, this is all happening at once because that's how I feel and that's mm -hmm. going to make me feel better. I think it's a control thing. Maybe? Yeah, I was going to say, I was just about to say it, it makes you feel more in control. I do it like I don't hate eat or, or stress eat. It rarely happens now because I mean, nowadays you just have so many different things to fucking inundate yourself with. But like bored eating like I work in IT all all yeah. the time. Yeah, there's a shitload of that. So when you're home, like say when if Diana goes out of town with her ladies and she's gone for like four or five days and I don't really go out, I'll, you know, be at the house like 10, 30, 11, like, bored, I'm kind of hungry. I guess I'll make some nachos or something. And you make this huge, it's enough for like five people. And then you kill it. And about an hour later, like, I kind of could eat again. I think I'm going to make a little cheese wrap or something. Just keep just eating, making these little like trasher meals, like the quick trasher meals. Like the bender back sandwich. Yeah, bender, like a, yeah, just one piece of bread because I'm not going to eat a whole sandwich. I am Pillow. not familiar with that term, but that's very good. I always just call it a one slicer. The bender back was coined. I, 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 I'm saying my mother coined it because she's the only person I've ever heard say it. But it's a. Uh, it's well, found out later in life. It's probably her just being a cheap ass. But you take one piece of bread. And you make your little sandwich, and you can't put a lot in it. It's generally like a peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and syrup, which I also found out not a lot of people know about that peanut butter and syrup either. That's fucking awesome. Try it wow, at home. Wow, that sounds great. It's pretty awesome. Then you just fold it in half, and it's a little bender back. It's sure. a cute name. Yeah, but you bet you just bender back. But but I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if you thought your mom coined it because when you're young, you don't see the world yet. Oh, there wasn't sure. the internet. Mm -hmm. So did you think your mom coined every term? 
No, well, no, just that one. Well, for a while, when the big swig thing, why don't you explain what the big swig? Okay, is well, to my Taylor. my mom again. Uh, I was a, we were, I guess my dad was still in the at this time, so she would go. Actually, I think she may have found this one at an estate sale or garage sale. She would come home all the time with this weird shit, like clothes from that shit no one's ever going to wear. One day she came home with this giant fucking box, and they were still in like their pla- like plastic wrap, like they were going to go to the store. 32, 42-ounce paper cups, plastic cups, with a <coughs> cartoon depiction of what can only be described as a yokel. And it just said Huck's Big Swig on it, and there was a shit ton of them in the closet. So like any, hundreds. Hundreds. So anytime like I had friends over, uh, so she, she wouldn't have to do dishes, we would just drink out of these Huck's Big Swigs. It kind of looked like a Wendy's cup. Yeah. And like a, it was like if the Wendy, the Wendy girl, if Wendy herself wore, was wearing like a big straw hat and had like gap teeth and was yeah. just like, Ugh! yeah, like it was, <laughs> yeah. it was really sad. And, and the fact that it was called Huck's Big Swig. H- Huck's Big Swig. Like to me, that predated those huge like Bubba jugs they have now. Yeah. Also very prevalent in IT work. Bubba jugs? Of people really? with that. Lots of mutants eating and drinking. Like I've, there was this dude who I used to work with who would drink a three liter of Mountain Dew out of one of those every day. Mm. And I'm not here to body shame anyone for being chubby, because I obviously am a chubby-ish man myself on most days. But, uh, you know, you see someone doing that to themselves. You just kind of... I don't even know if it's a rubbernecking thing so much as a concern thing, because that's just... It's how you lose your feet. That's how you have so many other... Like, I, I used to weigh, like, almost 250 pounds. Whoa. Yeah, I was a big one. It was bad. Uh, you drink a shitload of beer and eat like shit all the time and sure. don't take care of yourself. Sure, sure. Just avalanches. And so I have I know to a lesser extent than this guy, obviously I can't dictate his experience. He's probably 400 pounds. But I know some of the things that that dude probably, you know, goes through as far yeah. as, you know, hey, help me pick these things up. And then you put them down somewhere and you're like, why am I sweating? It's like 69 <laughs> degrees in here. Yeah. Man, but you know, you can also be a little more trim or skinny and be completely out of shape. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of right in the middle. I'm not scrawny and I'm not fat. I'm just me. I'm, I'm a little doughy in spots, you know, but no, normal American man for my age. I'm sure. But the last two days at work, I have worked my ass off because I'm so, I was so used to coming from like a graphic design, just sit down at a desk, bored all day you know and just like sitting there staring at a screen there would be times where i wouldn't get up for hours you know i would i would i would hold in piss because i was like i just don't feel like getting up yet i'm I'm saving that little journey for for after lunch or after you know in the next hour or whatever so we're setting up this new space at the new job and i've been like building furniture like today i painted and did all this stuff and i'll tell you what papa harris is fucking plum war out man a lot of work i do not realize how out of shape i am until i do the most minuscule amount of work (laughs) i woke up this morning and my right wrist was just (laughs) on fire right because i was turning one of those like ikea-esque allen keys yeah all day yesterday and like even right now as i'm like mimicking that movement my wrist hurts and i'm like how i'm falling apart man i had that happen today too we had to move our department upstairs Hmm. And uh, so, I mean, I, I'm not going to front like I built any cubicles or anything. They come around with a cart and they go, all right, go into this ox on your phone, go upstairs, put the shit together, shut up, whatever. But I carried, I mean, at most combined uh, 60 pounds between keyboard and, you know, monitors. Bubba and jug. My two Bubba jugs, both full <laughs> code Mountain red. Dew. Oh, God. Live <laughs> wire. None of that code red garbage. I like to go back and forth. I get, a, I get a sip of the code red and a sip of the live wire. And then I mix them in my mouth. Oh, yeah. Filter feed it. That, that yeah. awful oh, sound. I'm not going to do it. In, oh, there it is. I didn't even have to do it. Oh. Oh. It's like someone stepping on a slug or something. Oh, I don't like that. There, there, there was a guy I used to work with and and... He would go, he, he, he was always real quiet at work and our office was like dead silent. Like, I wish we could record this podcast in that office. That's how great and silent it was. Sounds but amazing. Every, and I, and I shit you not every 45 seconds to a minute and 15 seconds, you just hear. Ooh, I couldn't do that. I would go, I would go postal. 
a local term. It was, <laughs> it was. It disgusting. is coined in Edmond, Oklahoma. Wait, going postals coined in Edmond, Oklahoma. Yeah, the Edmond Post Office that's right near us. Yes, that's, that's the postal worker in the '90s who flipped out and shot a bunch of people. That's, o- OP. Yeah, original postman. Original postman. <laughs> I had no idea yeah. it was that close to home. Yeah. What's Just the guy's right, name in office here. space? Melvin Milton. No. Milton. Milton. Yeah. Proto Milton. Dang. I didn't know that was in Edmond. And I'm, I, I, again, going back, I've heard going postal. I thought my dad made that up. Mm-mm. And when you when you have that frame of reference after you find out that it's that guy that did it, that phrase is pretty fucking funny. It's kind of it's funny, but it's fucked up. Oh, it's a yeah, cop yeah, yeah. for sure. It's yes. a dark thing. Yes, but it, I don't. Maybe that just means I'm I'm the warped one. But that's it's pretty funny. Like because I've said it, I don't know, probably a hundred times in my life before I knew. Just like, if X, Y, Z happens, I'm going to go postal. This is bullshit. Yeah. But now I'm 26 and I know that that dude Literally. legitimately <laughs> went Rambo at his job. And yeah. it's like, there, there, it's there are heavy. not one, but two video games named after that term. Postal 1 and Postal 2. They were like first person shooters or whatever in the 90s or mm-hmm. early 2000s. And the whole thing was you were a mad postman that were killing civilians as you were delivering their mail. So it's weird that that all comes back to Edmund of all places. I'm hoping that it's just like a shell kind of like paper boy. But instead <laughs> of throwing, you know, newspapers, you're just emptying mags into front yards like and breaking throwing, their windows. Throwing pipe bombs. <laughs> yeah. Anthrax letters. Yeah. And then the kid oh, from oh. from the stupids follows you. Yeah. Or wait, is it the stupids where he's like two dollars? No, no, that's a uh, isn't that uh, say anything? I ha- I am you completely out of my element. Yeah, the I believe so. I always time. mix up that and then in the stupids where uh, the kid comes outside and he sees the garbage truck that's taking everyone's trash. Mm-hmm. And this is probably the only actual funny scene in that car crash or tire fire or what have you of that movie. Sees the garbage truck, thinks they're stealing people's trash and decides to chase them because who wouldn't? And he looks at a bike and he goes, two wheels. And he looks at a car four wheels then he looks at roller skates eight wheels skates after the garbage truck oh. truly the apex of american cinema i'm gonna have to watch that you, remember, you don't remember the stupids i've ne- do you thought do you like cringe humor because if you don't do. it is really hard to get through. no i do I, I in fact that's kind of my favorite me humor. too yeah. it's a tom arnold vehicle from probably 91 maybe? you had me at tom arnold yeah it's Speaking of cringe, there is a new show on USA Network called First Impressions. Are you familiar with this? No. Hosted by none other than Dana Carvey. Ooh. Okay. It's a 30-minute competition show, and there's three um, impressionists, I guess you'd say. Is that the right term for somebody who does impressions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, There are three impressionists that battle against each other, and Dana Carvey's the host, and he always has a co-host with him, like a... John Lovitz, Kevin Nealon. Mm-hmm. Has he had Jay Moore? Because that guy crushes the impressions game. No, but he does. Because I've heard him on yeah, like O and A over the years, and like mm-hmm. awesome, he's awesome. Um, but the MC for the show is Freddie Prinz Jr. So both of those dudes are broke then between Dana be. Carvey and Freddie Prinz Jr. And Freddie Prinz, I know, I know, you know, we can't escape death, but the dude's looking old, very gray. I but is up. he is he gray and like looking good or does he look like cottage cheese left in a sauna? No, not quite. He he looks okay. He's just getting old and as we all will mm-hmm. or or already are. Oh sure. But I leaned over to my wife and I said, "More like Freddie Prince Sr." Ooh, that's a good one. It made a terrible impression. <laughs> the show <laughs> is cringe though. It's so cringe because here's here's my here's my qualm with this show. I love a good impression. We talk about cringe humor being great. It's up there. Uh, somebody that can just nail a good impression. Sure. I fucking I will watch it over and over. Who's I'm that, a huge fan, yeah. Who's that dude on YouTube who does like the quick ones? He's like a Uh there's a bunch of them. He's on Walking Dead now, but I can't remember his fucking name, but he's on Douglas movies all the time. Okay. But he does them quick. Like it's not like a he doesn't do, you know, walk, and that's a terrible walking. You know what I mean? But he doesn't, good, he doesn't do it for like a long time. It's like, it's quick. What would it be like if Kevin Spacey couldn't open a Coke can? That kind of shit. That kind of shit's funny. But there's also some that are fucking terrible. Well, here's here's my problem. Okay, so if you're an impressionist, 
or some of the, I don't think some of these people are impressionists. I think that they had a friend that said, "Hey, you do a pretty good walking. Everybody does walking. Mm-hmm. Everybody theater does, kid with rich parents. Yes, or you know, friends that hate him and want him to go on TV and embarrass himself. Damn, that's some ruthless friends. But I support that. I can think of a couple of my friends who I would probably be like, "No, dude, you're gonna crush it. You should. You should totally go on you for that." On, well, these hey. people go on, and and some of them are killer. Like some are. I'm like, man, I'm gonna look that person up on YouTube and watch him. Because that's what I do with my life. I watch impressions on YouTube. But there's some people that are so bad. It's like somewhere along the line, somebody told you you were good at this. And you, and the fucked up thing is you believed it because mm-hmm. you have an ego. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going on TV in front of Garth and sure. Norm MacDonald or whoever the, else. The, the oh, church oh lady. I would crumble. There is no way. He's the funniest human being that's alive. I think the pinnacle of me thinking he was funny again was when he did that roast and what roast Bob was Saget. it Saget. he destroyed yeah was that the one where he was like reading the newspaper during the roast people and it, would say shit and he would ruffle the newspaper and look at them yeah, yeah. yes i love norm mcdonald i i, I knew he was funny like a week single up person on the planet like yeah really yeah. uh-huh seriously well i mean i could probably get in trouble with uh you know my god Right, no, I'm just right, kidding. Right. Uh, Norm Macdonald and my girlfriend and Gilbert Gottfried are probably my top three humans. And is, then Sushi and Ginger, my cats, rounding out the five. Is mm-hmm. Gilbert Gottfried my god? Is that what you call him? It, well, uh, prior to now, no. But hereafter, yes. Uh, he's really good at impressions, too. Have you ever seen any of his? Yeah. He does The Odd Couple as a Hollywood movie from like the late 80s or so for, I mean, like the frame of reference for the uh, the people. But Alice as Jack Nicholson in particular. Wow. You're not going fucking bowling. That's pretty good. He you should, good. I know this TV show you should try to get on. Oh, I, tell me more. Solid it, plug. Does anyone do, uh, I mean, Sandler became a classic. Has anyone do, done any Sandler? I haven't seen a Sandler oh. yet. The, the biggies. Let me let me just see if I can rapid fire the biggies. Walking, of course. Right. Yeah. Everyone and their grandmother, yeah. Tom Arnold. Just really? tying it all in together here. Tom Arnold's a big one. I can't think of a single thing that I would identify Tom Arnold with besides the Paul F. Tompkins bit about him mm-hmm. or Chris, actually physically seeing him in the stupids. Chris Farley being Tom Arnold on SNL. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. It, was, it wasn't a very good impression, but it was there funny. Was, there, there was this one guy on there and he did a Louis C.K. And dude, it it just made me smile from ear to ear because it was perfect and the other okay so let's go back to why i hate this show but watch every single episode so these 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 impressionists they usually only have like three to five good impressions Mm. so they keep going back to them and like you want more you want more the second thing is there's a certain round in the show round two where they have to pull names out of a hat and do the impression but it's like how do you do the impression of someone you don't know how to do the impression for it sounds like a combination of wild and out meets like uh oh yeah the, the douchey part of inside the actor's studio with james lipton <laughs> i think they actually took both of those sets and combined them and then threw in a sprinkling of jerry springer because there's like the slow rotating fan in the background of course oh, and like the geez. slime on the well, yeah, wall. it gets hot when people are doing such wonderful impressions so you need a fan to turn it about Slowly. one rotation per minute i mean you don't want to whisk all of the sweat off because then you're going to get them uh, wetter than they would have otherwise been and then you know you're creating more surface area covered in liquid it's common i mean you know my last thing and i'll shut up about this show but the last i could talk about this for the whole hour yeah. we're just we should just put on an episode and just like mic it up riff track no. it yeah. yeah um dana carvey man you know growing up with garth growing up with with him on snl like huge huge to me but now now he looks like an aging lesbian i feel that way about gallagher and I feel that way about Gallagher in spades because oh, gone now. I used to have a Gallagher poster hanging right here and I took it down because I felt it was slightly offensive. You know, it, it, it's just one of those things where if I had gotten into anyone else, like it could have easily been Andrew Dice Clay, could have been any of, you know, the the, the redneck three or four, whatever they are. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, just my grandfather w- watched Richard Pryor. He watched Red Fox. Both who are, you know, obviously legends in their own mm-hmm. right and actually uh, people I would consider talented stand-up comedians and not racist hacks. Yeah. 
and then Gallagher. Then there's Gallagher. <laughs> and, you know, like, I can remember being five or six years old and just having a bit that he had said that was just bouncing around in my head for several days. Do and you remember it? Yeah, I remember it specifically, yeah. He talked about cat food, and in true Gallagher fashion, I don't know why we name it. I don't know why we make flavors of cat food. Cat's just going to lick his butt. Make the cat food taste like the cat's butt. And five-year-old me is looking up in the pantry in my grandma's old house and having, like, an ugly laughing fit. Like, not, like, the, like, quick snort or, like, the, the like, two or three haws, but, like, high-pitched, shrieking, gasping for air. Well, he he's he's uh, situational humor, man. He, he sees things and he gets it. That was a terrible impression of Gallagher, by the way. Oh, no, that wasn't even supposed to be Gallagher. That oh, was, I, I, I was just using a different voice. I was really to... hoping you would go into a Gallagher. I can't... I don't think I can actually do Gallagher, which is surprising not only because he was, like, my frame of reference for, like, right. stand-up comedy as a kid, but also one of my favorite O&As ever is his racist meltdown. Yes. And he walks out, right? Yeah. He, yeah. Patrice O'Neill, who is one of my favorite comedians anyway, just because if you can make someone laugh at things that vehemently offend you, you are the epitome of a comedian. Right. It's, that's the... And get away with it. It's te <sighs> it's textbook, you know? And I His obviously... so great. Yeah. And, you know, having him and then Anthony, who is kind of a, a racist idiot as it is, like having yeah. those two to go back and forth all the time. I mean, I've I think I've listened to all 489 Patrice on ONAs. They're all cataloged on YouTube. Awesome. He's so he was so good on there. Oh, it's it's just this long con for like 49 or 50 minutes after they actually get in and start biting into him a little bit. And Patrice says something particularly blue to him, and I don't remember what it was, but they decide, all right, that's enough. We're not going to make any more jokes because Gallagher hasn't said anything. It's been radio silent for like mm -hmm. two or three minutes. And one of the guys, I think it's Anthony based on what he says, but he was like, the first guy to do your act was the guy with the fire hose from the civil rights bit. <laughs> Craziest thing I've ever yeah, heard on the yeah, radio. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, to be fair, I don't obviously personally agree with it, but solely from a uh, an appreciation of roasting someone yeah top tier yeah right solid there is you know solid burn yeah it's really good and he you just you can have you ever heard someone crack audibly crack where you can't see them but you i mean you, you just can know. feel like you can feel the tension yeah. in the air and you can feel like like you could reach out your hand and like slice through it and mm -hmm. it's contained in audio and ev just thinking about it like gets me where it's one of the funniest things i've ever heard i gr growing up i loved gallagher loved him i mean like watched every special i'm like, very my happy dad. that we can bond over this yeah. because this is like a dark i wouldn't say it's a secret a, a couple of my friends know that i've seen a lot of gallagher but it's not something i'm like hey you guys know who i used to watch dude my my good friend randy hire Gave me a Gallagher poster when I was filming his little mini documentary thing Shouts I made. Shouts out to Big Rand. Yes, Big R. Thank you. And then, this is a weird thing. So, I used to work at a newspaper down in Norman. And there was this... I worked upstairs and there was... There were, there were two stories and there was a lady that worked downstairs. And I worked with my friend Wes at the time. And the the lady that 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 ended up giving me my first Gallagher poster, she was a really sweet older woman i was older i was like 24 25 at the time and she was probably in her like mid to late 40s so when i say older i just mean older than me um sweet lady and you know you ever you ever met someone or worked with an older woman that you go man you know what 10 years ago she was probably really hot and sure. then you know life happens you grow up you grow out it happens, you know, she was still very pretty and like very sweet and like, sure, you know, Yeah. but Wes and I lovingly referred to her as big titty mama. <laughs> Whoa. Or BTM for short. Uh, that, sure. that came completely out of left field. This was like <laughs> this really sweet memoriam for a minute. And yeah. then it was just like, hey, this lady has gigantic knockers. Well, she and she did. I mean, they were like the classic, like ant like big old footballs just big big old boobs and you know like she wasn't she wasn't overweight she was just kind of ant shaped you know for lack of a better term um she loved me though and there was one night i was this was back when i was single 
she had my phone number and she would text me every once in a while. And she'd, she'd want to like go get a beer after work. And one time I did, but I really wasn't thinking anything of it. I was mm-hmm. just like, okay, we'll go across the street and have a beer. And then one night she was like texting me. And then I was like, I was a little drunk. This is a separate night. And so finally I was like, fuck it. And I said, BTM, are you flirting with me? And she didn't respond. And then I saw her on Monday at work. And it was so awkward because like, I didn't know if I crossed the line or if she was flirting with me. Right. So was she aware of the the acronym? The moniker? Yeah. No. So that's probably why. I never well, I never called her. Or that. she could have think she could have thought you were calling her a bottom. I never called her that. No, oh, no, 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 I, no, 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 I thought you had one too many and you were like, he's inserting, he's inserting the name, okay. right, to yes. save yeah. the of course, placeholder, of course, yeah. Bravo Tango Michael, yes, um, she, I thought she was flirting with me, and I'm not trying to come off and be like, oh, I'm such hot stuff, whatever, I mean, I'm getting flirted with sure. by a 45 year old woman, whatever, it still feels nice to be flirted with, it felt nice, and I'm gonna be honest, I was lonely back then, and if I would have got a text back, she might have been my Mrs. Robinson, maybe so, Maybe so. Long story short, <laughs> I I leave that job to go to my new job. Somehow she, and I moved to Edmond. Somehow she got my new address. Maybe she got it from Wes. Maybe she got it from somebody I worked with. I don't know. I come home from work one day and there's um, one of those cardboard mailing tubes on my front porch. And I open it up and it's a perfectly preserved 80s poster of Gallagher. <laughs> that's incredible but it was gallagher it was a picture it was it was first vhs's and it had like the vhs's down the side of the poster and he was he was he had his back turned but he was looking over his shoulder very coyly with an umbrella that looked like a watermelon go figure and he had a little derby on and he was in a watermelon thong talk about some weird mixed signals man i mean that's pretty awesome i think despite my uh, general distaste for the man that we've affectionately come to know as Leo Gallagher that I would still probably display that in my house if I had it. I have two posters and like I said I did have one hanging here in the studio but now we have Duncan Trussell and uh, so wait, so I have been trying so to figure out who that was the entire time. I'm really glad that you acknowledged that. Yeah that's Duncan Trussell and his puppet Little Hobo. It's signed. Signed by him too. It kind of looks like um, a dime bag a little bit. Dude, the goatee. Yeah, yeah, it, especially the goatee. Yeah. It, and that p- piece of his chest there, this is probably really interesting for whoever's listening, but the piece of his chest behind the goatee, it almost looks like one of Dimebag's uh, yeah. Yeah, no, raccoon it, it, tail. It looks like it's a continuation of his beard. I did yeah. not realize it was his chest, but now I see what you're talking about. It's a horrible, horrible poster. It's scary. It's not flattering. Yeah, I would not like to see that on hallucinogens. No. Which and is apropos because Duncan Trussell loves hallucinogens. He does. He does. You know, he kind of also maybe looks like if Jesus tried ventriloquism. I bet yeah, Jesus yeah. would fucking crush the ventriloquist oh, game. Oh, for sure. Talking about impressions and shit. I bet Jesus. Got also, technically, you could do a Jesus impression right now and no one could technically call you on it because they don't know what he sounded like either. Right. What if he was like? Well, give, give me give me your best Jesus. My best Jesus. Hey, what's up? <laughs> right? Jesus, <laughs> Jesus sounds a lot like my neighbor. I don't know. Anytime, <laughs> anytime I have a voice for something that I don't know the voice of, like if it's pets mm-hmm. or like an inanimate object, always Mickey Mouse. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like a high. Oh. Yeah, like my cat Ginger uh, likes to just squawk mm-hmm. throughout the house, mm-hmm. and I like to imagine that she's just acknowledging things she's walking by. Nightstand. <laughs> but you know, she, mm-hmm. cause no, she's not really saying anything. You know, she's right. like, ah, that's there. I, I'm by it. Do you do that with your pets? Because Diane and I do that with with Charlie and Nate, and their voices are this kind of the same. I, you know, I I honestly don't. I I've never been like, oh, Olivia. I but I I'm such a dork to my pets. Like I love our new cat, like our big gray cat. I love it's that. It's adorable. Cat so I remember it from Adam's birthday. It's adorable and it's so sweet. So I don't talk as them. But like, I would be so embarrassed if either of you heard the way I talk to my cat or my dog when no one's around. Oh, you can ask Jed Harkey about how I speak to my pets because we play Destiny all the time and he hears all of my narrations. Usually I I attribute undesirable human characteristics to pets and tell them to people. Mm-hmm. 
Like, <laughs> I have a bit that I haven't really gotten to work out yet about how I you know, I got these two cats, and one of them is a 9-11 truther. And for, like, two days, it was really cute, because she'd be like, jet fuel can't melt steel beams. But now, like, you know, I've had her for, like, a year, and it's like, building seven! It's like, you gotta stop. <laughs> you gotta let it go. That, but see, speaking of impressions, that's a pretty good Mickey, man. I've been doing that stupid voice for a long time. If it was if it if it was worse than it is, I would have to. I'll probably hear this next two three weeks and go. All right, it's time to retire, Mickey. Right. Shit yeah. is a car fire. And move on to that Gallagher, because dude, killer. I think anytime anytime I do a Gallagher, anytime I hear people doing a Gallagher, it's them doing Dave Chappelle doing Gallagher. Black Gallagher. Yeah. I, I would be afraid that it would turn into that for me, too. But if you think about it, the Dave Chappelle, the vocal, I mean, it was pretty spot on. He's a pretty good impressionist himself. Yeah. yeah. Black Gallagher, because being a Gallagher <laughs> fan, when yeah. Black Gallagher... Oh, that was fucking great. Rose out, rose out? I don't... What does that even mean? Rose out. When Black Gallagher aired that, that skit... I was in heaven because I loved Chappelle's show and mm-hmm. I loved Gallagher and just to marry the two things. I think to this day, like it's neck and neck for me because of just different niche interests, but it's got to be either Mr. Show or Chappelle's show yeah. for best sketch comedy. Both great. I mean, both had an absurdly good writing staffs. Both had really good comedians, although most of them that were on Chappelle's show I didn't know about because I was like 10 or 11 years old. Oh my God, that makes me feel so Oh, yeah, what dude. was it like living uh, whenever everything was black and white all over the planet and there was no color? Wait, 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 you said you were 10 years old when Chappelle was on? Yeah, probably. That's probably about well, right. Well, no, I, I would like, have been 11 or 12 because it was 2002 was when Rick James aired, right? Yeah, I was 21. No, it might have been 2003. It's it's in that. It's post no, 9-11 for 2002, sure. 2002, I was 20. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, Man, so old. I'm younger than a lot of my friends and it never comes up. Unless it's like that, where it's mm-hmm. like, well, you know, I remember being in this grade when this happened, and every time it's just this awkward silence afterwards. It's like, oh, Taylor's twenty three. Well, that we, kind of happened when uh, Garrett was on before your bandmate in Filaments. Garrett was on, and he was talking about something. Nice plug. And and Robbie goes, uh, don't listen. What, what, how, how old are you again? And he goes, I'm, what did it take twenty? He's like super twenty five, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think so. And, you're, and I was like, oh man, it's almost. We're almost 10 years older than you. And Rob's like, I am 10 years. Like, fuck. But the thing is, like, maybe I, I battle with this from time to time. Speaking of issues. Um, good plug. Good album. Corn. Number one Can in go, the world, Can baby. Cannot go a fucking thing without talking about corn. Um, um, is it, am I weird for still having things in common with, with, with people 10 years younger than me? Or is it that the people that I hang out with that are younger than me? grew up in the same shit that I did. You know what I mean? So the, our, our bond in common is either punk rock, comic books, uh, the scene, sure, comedy, or art. Yeah, and I think that it also, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be A, B, C, or D. Sure. I, I'm inclined to think it's the latter mm-hmm. because I've always just hung out with people who were older than me as it is because mm-hmm. I had nothing in common with a lot of people my age as a kid. And so until it comes up in conversation about how old I am, people just assume that I'm that age, I yeah. guess. There's a, I don't there's act a bracket. Like, yeah. I, I mean, didn't know you were only 25. I'm, I thought I thought you were like, not because of like the way you look or the, because we don't know each other that well. Is this a fat joke, Robbie? It, no, I was trying to reference Gallagher. Oh, it all comes back to Gallagher. He's, Always. He's, he is our Kevin Bacon. I, I lo- but see, I, I've always wanted to do, <laughs> okay, hold on. I got to give that a second. You know, I, I'm, in my brain, I, I, I've just been trying to work that cat food bit so I can do a Gallagher of it. <laughs> well, I mean, I have, I, I have a few classics, Yeah, classic Gallagher bits. Um, mm-hmm. There's the, uh, why do we drive on parkways and park on driveways? My favorite is this. It's a visual one. Why do they call it a bus when it only comes to here? <laughs> god damn Man. it i got i got another one why do they put door locks on a 24 hour 7-eleven and then flip the hair <laughs> yeah and and then this like dude i speaking of okay speaking of all of those old gallagher specials are on hulu all of them they they were recently oh, like, that's my night that's a good added. way for him to make money that's smart yeah. on his part because they were selling the the like compendium like 
big fucking box of those DVD specials from Showtime, and I was like, no one is paying you two hundred dollars you know, for those. I know. I, I feel. Like I have the internet. I'll steal them, and I still won't even keep them on my hard drive. I'll, I, I'll download them and just immediately delete them. <laughs> out of so spite. He, he's got. He's got several, right? There's like like twenty. Yeah, I feel like bunch. I've seen stuck in the '60s like seventeen fucking times. Is and that the one where he's bouncing around on the, on the big couch? On the couch, he pulls yeah. out that giant condom. Which, when you're a kid, you're like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Or or the one where he's driving like the car with like the, it's like a tricycle, but it's got like a slug bug door yeah, on, the, on side. the side. Yeah, and, oh, and then the one that's a school desk or something. Can man, we discuss how is. hack prop comedy is for a second? You can, are you talking shit on my man Carrot Top? Listen, the, the top. The, the only thing the I'm going to say about the top, because there is only one, <laughs> is Norm Macdonald made the best joke about Carrot Top I've ever heard in my entire life on Conan in like '98, and I don't even bother trying to make fun of him anymore because I'm never going to top it. Yeah, I get it. That wasn't on purpose, but I'm going to roll with it like All that right. shit was. Right. Thank you. To- <laughs> You're a great hype man. We should start a rap group. I'm down. I'm not on enough cocaine to think that I can rap. <laughs> The night's young, man. Maybe after this, we gotta can, get on that flock. We can spit a demo. That booger sugar. Um, that reminds me. Eric Ellenwood said one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life in regards to Phil- Fieldy's dreams, <laughs> and that's cocaine plus infinite money plus yes men always equals the worst music ever. Oh, that's the word. I I've never. Robbie showed that to me a week or so ago. <laughs> I've I've known of its existence. I mean, I worked at a record store when it came out, but I never heard it, and it is the worst. The worst thing I've ever heard, and I listened to like lit. I am <laughs> no stranger to egregious hyperbole, yeah. and I'm also a music nerd, mm-hmm. and it's got to be in my top five. I don't know. I think that as far as the genre of cocaine rap, it has to be the worst cocaine <laughs> rap album. Besides maybe D.D. D. King, back when D.D. Ramon was freebasing. You know what? I think D.D. King is. It's going to go better than Phil D's dream. Man, I'm not sure. It's really bad. Well, but it's kind of apples to oranges. That's true. Well, that's not true. Uh, It's more like, let's say, Cran Apple to Cran Grape Cocktail. They're in the same wheelhouse, but they're separate shades of shitty. Well, you're also going, you're doing, I don't know, let's say, uh, 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 Atari Jaguar versus the Sega uh, 32X. Yeah. Show some respect. That Knuckles game was straight flames. Dude, I, I I got a 32X for Christmas the year it came out with doom and and some horrible motocross game did you you ever play knights on it knights was on the saturn wasn't it i thought that there was knights for 32x i'll google it at some point we'll look it up uh the the fieldies dream thing man like and then that's what i I, when i revisited that album and i was listening to it twice i thought but just go ahead and put it on my headstone he spent his life listening watching listening and watching things that he didn't like like sometimes i think life is so short and like why would i listen to feel these dreams again but i i like i, I like it <laughs> i it, like douching out on it, it comes down to cringe man and just because you're not cringing doesn't mean that anyone else you're forcing to listen to it and watching them not enjoy it isn't enjoyable for you because i do that shit all the time but that's twisted man but, for but, me uh, to be like hey josh listen to this shit no no, listen, no, no. it's but, great but, but, to drink you know, to that's the thing i, I enjoy i <laughs> As far as musicality goes, it's dog shit. It's yeah, the beats are bad. He has no no case flow. production. No, 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 but for listening to it for comedy wise, like to make me laugh, that shit's fucking hilarious. Dude, the one, the song, um, oh shit, what? Well, the banger is Child Vigilante. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, where he's like, yeah, that's the barn burner. The one, uh, I, and I and I know I'm gonna fuck the lyrics up oh, even worse. So than terrible. <laughs> but the one about like talking about putting shit on the door oh, ring shit, the bag, and a light bag. on fire yeah. open the door it's a bag on fire yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah worst bar maybe ever also maybe best bar ever <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> rhyme fire with fire doesn't he say something about like like p- pissing on something yeah or? Uh, pissing on your toothbrush or something somewhere randy's e- ears are perking right now uh, wherever he is i don't know if he's at school or at work but slamming his fist on a table <laughs> you, you can guarantee he knows we're talking about fieldy's dreams and he's howling at the sun or moon because i have no frame of reference Wait, for what it's like outside but in in like ecstasy or in hatred uh, maybe a little bit i think yeah i don't think that they're necessarily exclusive yeah. i would say more ecstasy because randy loves bad things more than both of us combined to a point where i've I've just now, in the two or three years that he's been my friend, stopped believing it's a bit. Right. Because and it takes for a, a long while. time, I thought it was. Because yeah. no one, 
no one owns as many bad movies as that guy well, out that, of anyone I've ever met. That's the thing. And every year he does like favorites of the year. Anytime like a new movie comes out, he goes and sees it like eight times and he says it's awesome. I'm like, well, yeah, man, but you like shitty movies. What if this movie sucks? Turns out a lot of his movie picks, his new movie picks in theaters are always spot on. But sometimes he'll like some stinkers. I like some stinkers too, man. I like that X Men movie. I like Ninja Turtles. I I like to think that I've stopped being a contrarian in most walks of my life, or at least made an active effort to contain that part of me for the sake of all of the people who still think I'm a nice person. You know, right? There's, there's few of those because I'm an man. I'm an opinionated asshole. But I understand that, and I try to keep it to myself outside of situations where it's warranted. Mm-hmm. But man. Every now and then, I'll agree with one of his really out there takes right. that everyone is like, what? What does that mean? But, you know, I mean, the b- broken clocks, right, twice a day. Me and him see so eye to eye on the ending of True Detective season one that I could kiss him on the mouth. Are you guys fans of the ending of True Detective or not? It made both of us so angry. Yeah, me too. That we, like, I, I've watched it since all the way through once and I turned it off before that scene. And part of that's probably me being like a snobby atheist dickhead, but also a big part of it when you have this dude who's like jerking off over like modern nihilism and all of this stuff about the occult and, you know, renouncing the Western dogma of sure. of Southern Baptist religion for him to just be like, oh, I saw my dad. Get the fuck out of my cop face. Out, yeah. Cop out. I, I won't say lazy writing because I didn't write one of the best shows I've ever seen. But I will say that that's tropey and it's definitely lazy. Yeah. Well, speaking of Get lazy to... writing, <laughs> we're going to go to break. But I just wanted that's to read an excerpt sure. from um, Child Vigilante. Please and, um, inform the people. They go, need to know. Go ahead and cue up that music bed. Okay. When the sun goes down, out come the freaks. Destu- destructive little punk breaking everything I see. Creep in your house. I'll piss on your couch. Tag all your walls. Tear the heads off your daughter's dolls. Shave your cat's back is a must. Then I'll wipe my ass with your favorite toothbrush. Erase all the numbers on your celly phone. That's the one that got me. Celly phone. Well, also, who's going to just leave their cell phone at home willingly if Fieldy's going to be in the house? That's true. What, what is he going to rhyme celly phone with, though? On my way out, toilet paper your home. He could have said cell phone. Shit in a bag, light it on fire. You open the door, there's a, a bag, bag on, on fire. fire. Stomp out the <laughs> flames, dookie on your feet. It's all fun and games. Short one bar. What's that about? I'll tell you what that's about. C minus musicianship is an MC, <laughs> Fieldy. Let, let me continue. Please. Sorry, I, would, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Our art. Don't scrub a dub dub because I shit in your tub. <laughs> I'm not a thief or a thug. I'll take a giggle and a laugh. Leave your house trashed. Field dog, the one who gets the last laugh. Bars. Genius. I think this is like, like, I think Kanye took a page from this book and just made a career out of it. Man, if Kanye snuck that into the life of Pablo, I would tattoo his face on my face. You you mean if if Kanye covered Child Entertainment Vigilante? Yeah, that that is an open challenge to Kanye West. You heard it here first. The gauntlet has been thrown down. Do you think that... Do you, we yeah. have the same birthday. Did you know that? You and Kanye West? June 8th, yeah. That nice. means once a year, we're blackout for the same reason at approximately the same time minus time zones. Or maybe with time zones. Yeah, Crazy. depending on where he is. Oh, yeah, because he's like Aren't a you guys like the same, like same year, too? No, he's probably like 30. No, he's in his 30s. Um, the, I thought he was like some young I have a bunch thing. of shitty ones for my birthday. It's like a... Barbara Bush, father of George Bush, obviously. Uh, shouts out to Ali G. Um, no, I think that was Borat. Uh, um, uh, Jerry Stiller. That's a good uh, one. Okay. Nick from Duran Duran. Uh, professional Argentinian footballer Javier Mascherano, who is going to jail for tax fraud. Nice. And there's one other one. Oh, yeah. Uh, known shithead Greg Ginn. Yeah, is there a website you go to to find all of this? Wikipedia, now? of course. I I Everything's that. on the internet. I don't know a single person that Me was too. born on my no, birthday. I don't know. It's probably better to know that because at least you can be like, ah, no one cool. I'm stuck knowing that me and Greg Ginn are celebrating our birthdays for the rest of my life. Speaking of fucking terrible musicians. And on that note, let's go on a break. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, welcome back. Episode 10 of Boys, and you can find all of our past episodes at boyspodcast.com. Um, like we say in every episode, it's a hub of all things boys. You can go to our social media from there. Um, you can donate to the show if you feel yeah. so inclined. Speaking of, we got another donation. What? Yes. Since last episode, we got another donation. That's awesome. This is, it's mind blowing when somebody sends us five bucks. It's really mind blowing when somebody oh, yeah. sends us $20. Yeah. Somebody sent us $20. That's awesome. Because they listen to the show and they enjoy this and they felt like it was worth their hard earned American money. And we appreciate that. Did a you make lot. sure Adam That's didn't amazing. break anything in your house? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. But, but anyways, the twenty dollars anonymous donation from Adam Lee Pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I drank all your beer. Sorry, no, that's me. I always drink his beer, and I feel terrible. But anyways, yeah, boyspodcast dot com. Uh, and thank you so much for listening to this. Let alone, you know, you don't have to give any money to us, but if you do feel so inclined, it does help keep the lights on in the place. Sure, and uh, helps my coke addiction. So, sure. you, <laughs> yeah, like cola. It, uh, the oh, things coke, that coca-cola. matter. Yeah. So yeah, we're back here. Uh, so. We usually do a thing where we, we, we talk to the guest about, you know, where they've been, what how they've came to who they are now. So how'd you start out? Well, what brought you to being the shithead that you are now? Uh, public school, seizure medications, and an overly religious family would probably be the most All right, likely. so that was the podcast. <laughs> Boom. It's a wrap. Let's Tune go home. Let's wrap that up. So, okay, so let's start at the top here. We, we all had the public school in common. So yes. let, let's skip that. Seizure medication. Did you have seizures when you were a kid? Yeah. Uh, I had uh, I'm I had uh, pre-adolescent seizure disorder. Uh, my mom has seizures. So it's a, one of those uh, hereditary things. Just kidding. I didn't come from no monkey. Um, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I had a seizure for the first time when I was eight years old in a swimming pool in my old neighborhood in Norman. Uh-huh. Uh, my friend's dad, Tom, who was a... RN, LPN, or like sur- surgeon nurse or something like that saved me from drowning. Um, uh, because of that, um, I mean, I had a couple after that. Uh, I That changed. I mean, it, seizures change everything, but really more than anything, since you don't know what's going on when you have any of the kinds that I had... It's more just like there's a bunch of rules that you don't really understand, but you understand enough that they're trying to m- make sure you don't die. Yeah. Right. Uh, like uh, my my triggers were uh, uh, extreme temperatures and uh, exhaustion, physical exhaustion. So had one playing soccer, had one swimming, had a bunch of them. I, I had multiple kinds too. Like I also had a absence seizures, which are two or three seconds long. You're eyeballs roll fix it a point um and it it's on um, they thought i had add mm-hmm. like i probably was having a lot of absence seizures before they diagnosed it and they're like give him some ritalin shut up and they did give me ritalin and i lost like way too much weight and my mom was like all right no more of this and then a little bit later on down the line two two years three years um had a seizure had a bunch of seizures then they put me on dilantin which is a common, or at, at the time it was common. I don't think they use it anymore, because uh, if you if it isn't what balances the chemicals in your brain, uh, it amplifies the seizures and makes them more violent. Right, like a lot of that medication seems to do. So then they put me on Depakote, which is the same thing that they put in a needle and stab into your glute if you're acting a damn fool on the ward. Oh wow! I, can, like I mean, there's EpiPen kind of a thing. Well, I. They were pills for me, but yeah. Depakote is also a sedative that's used for unruly patients on wards. Wow. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm obviously not a psychiatrist and you shouldn't self-diagnose because of confirmation bias. But I definitely remember being... Uh, like, I remember having a darker sense of humor afterwards. Because I don't know. I mean, it's a normal coping mechanism. Sure. Well, you're... you're, you're your your viewpoint your vantage point totally changed i would assume you know like you go from being like a little kid like you you're young and then it's like well this is reality i mean i can't act like it like fucked up my whole life or anything because right. i haven't had one since i was 11 uh usually if you have pre-adolescent seizure disorder whenever your frontal lobe and your cerebral cortex uh um fully develop sure. and all of the the uh neurons therein um it, it corrects a lot of the misfiring things that cause seizures because seizures are kind of like 
a blown transistor on like a like a board sure. or uh, uh, a misfiring circuit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, had those from third grade till sixth grade. And then that's where I fucked up because I used to play basketball and soccer, which I both st- still watch a lot of. But uh, I think just finally having the freedom to go do whatever I want I was, and having an uncle who skateboarded and wanting to like be like my cool uncle Jeff. I was like, no, I'm going to start skating and uh, several broken bones and a bad <laughs> knee later. Here we are. I, still I doing it. always wish i would have learned to skateboard when i was a kid i wish that i still played soccer or basketball Mm -hmm. because i still care so much about watching that like some people have religion and i think i just have sports right feels the same hole sure still know a bunch of asinine shit about it that's not going to save my life takes up your sunday yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) gotta eat somewhere at like 1 Mm p.m full of people wearing those long denim skirts and clogging up the salad bars oh the worst the worst we went to Okay, let me, let me back up here. So for my wife and I, going to the grocery store is always this horrible, dreadful, anxiety-riddled experience. Because like the white trash that we are, we want to go to Walmart because that's where you kind of get everything. You know, you honestly, know? people might throw shade at that who like have uh, Whole Foods money or privilege or whatever. But as a dude who sometimes needs to buy a bunch of groceries to eat for six days... If I'm buying a bunch of shit, I'm going to go to Walmart. Yeah. If I'm buying Whole Foods, I'll go there for like chicken. Sure. Their their protein is a lot better. Right. But I uh, also am probably just going to make stir fry anyway. And I'm, I don't have the, the gallstones to be like, listen, Emily, this fucking Walmart chicken is not going to cut it. Right. <laughs> but a lot of times like we'll go to buy groceries and I need to buy a tarp or WD-40 or something that they're not gonna have it whole foods or maybe whatever. just don't murder people while you uh yeah, make you... dinner separate trips all right honey i need we need uh we need chicken breast we need uh sandwich meat we need bread uh God, that's a right zip, of mayonnaise. Ties. Need mayonnaise, zip ties uh rubber gloves bleach need a lot of fucking bleach, a lot of bleach. and let's see if they have a 10 by 10 tarp because we need to put that by i mean got to cover something with it they got one of those breaking bad barrels that i can put <laughs> what acid in and get rid of the bodies and like bend a person in half and just dunk them right in it <laughs> like a donut seal stick, the just... top so we went to we went to walmart last sunday and we got up really early and it was really nice because we beat the church crowd mm-hmm. but we didn't beat the hover around crowd oh, oh dude the and, rascal oh. crowd is the worst to be around dude, honestly. and the worst is like when it's terrible when two of them meet like glaciers in the middle of an aisle and have a little stop and chat, kind of like you do in the country yeah. if you drove past another truck. Yeah, they they need to stop. have the motorcycle wave between them. Yeah. Where they just wiggle their oxygen mask and keep on rolling. Yeah. Shouts out Fred Durst. Another one. Let's keep it keep it going. Fred Wait. Durst, DJ Khaled. We're, we're dropping all sorts of references <laughs> here. Was that the another one or was that another? I was just saying you guys are just keeping it going with that the new metal references. Corn. So the, so far there's been a Corn Fieldy's Dreams and oh, Fred Durst. Has anyone brought up Head PE on this podcast yet? That's a deep cut of bad. That's real. I saw them in a concert, fun. man. Uh, they opened for System of a Down and, for, and Slayer. You know your kid's going to be born wearing trip pants because you saw head PE? <laughs> I hope so. I hope I'm that lucky. Anyways, we go we go to Walmart and so there there was there was no church crowd, but man, like I, l- let me ask you something, Taylor. Like do you want to have kids or not? Yeah, I think yeah. eventually. Uh right now with the financial stress of right. ex- existing at an in an entry level position in a career field, I uh it's kind of a foregone conclusion that I can't do it right now. Right. And I also have medical issues, which in the back of my mind, I'm like, got to have a job with insurance, period. Right. Because guaranteed, this kid's popping out and foaming at the mouth. And we're just going to have to put our laundry in the bathtub with him. Right. Put a wallet in his mouth. You know, got to you got to get things done at the same time. He's going to be asleep for 24 hours. You could do the laundry afterwards. Sure. But. I, I just I Eric and I, we talk about it like she does not want to have kids. I could go either way, but I'm always like, you know, it's your body. Sure. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to force you to have children. I sometimes I kind of want them. But then when I go to Walmart, I don't want them. It's a commitment until they can do chores around your house. Yeah. Then it's a payback. Yeah. And like, then it's like, man, you remember all the times I didn't get to watch basketball live because you threw up on me or the house. Better get out there and mow that lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie <laughs> Jr. I, 
I it'd be Robbie it'd be the third. third. <laughs> Robbie three spawn of Robbie two. I, I've always joking about Eric. I'm always like, I want to have a boy. I gotta have a boy because in my family, in in my bloodline, let's talk, kind of Game of Thrones. This shit here. or Lieutenant Dan. I I don't. If I don't have a male child, the Harris name is done. Oh, dude, I'm done. I'm good as a Vincent because there's one other boy, Vincent. So I could go like, like if things go well in my life at some point, I could be Taylor Vincent Bills and it wouldn't be a big deal. Nice. Because someone else is going to pass on these terrible genes and pasty skin. I and I don't even think he has seizures. So it's a win-win for the bonus. gene pool. Yeah, it's a bonus. I, sure. I, I'm, I, I don't get the pressure from my family for us to have kids. I think they've forgotten about that long ago. So they've just given up. But I kind of put that pressure on myself. I'm like, should I have a little boy? I want to name him Robbie so I can so I can call him the third. Like, hey, the third, get out of your dad's beer. That's why, uh, you know, my buddy Trey Ridlin, his name is Raymond. He is called oh. Trey because he is the third Raymond Ridlin in his family. Is that like a conventional naming thing I don't, to do? I mean, I don't know if there's a rule book for these things. Okay. But I, once I found out his name was Raymond, I mean... I've known that dude for 10 years, probably two or three years in me and my buddy, Caleb, the drummer of filaments, um, Mm -hmm. called him Raymond for like two years, Hmm. but he, he finally changed it on his driver's license to Trey, but Raymond lives on TRE. Uh, no, no, not like Trey. Cool. Trey, like, uh, uh, I'm rolling a joint on this tray. Okay. Like T R A Y. Act, well, no, I can't spell. You're right. It's T R E Y. -Y. That would be, that would be like gray to gray. Trey to Trey. Yeah, there's not really... I mean, everyone I know who's named Trey spells it T-R-E-Y. Well, Trey Trey Cool is because he is a third, and that's why his name is Trey Cool. There, there are, Trey's an interesting name because mm-hmm. there's there's T-R-E, mm-hmm. Trey Cool. Mm-hmm. There's T-R-E-Y, mm-hmm. Trey, Trey Millward. Millward. <laughs> Had lunch with him today. Lovely, handsome little man. Oh, you mean Trey man. from Mako? Oh, Mako. I love Mako. Mako was good. Dude, Mako was tight. That's why everyone... He should have stopped there. Everyone knows popular Trey from Mako. Handsome. Handsome man. I wish he didn't quit Destiny. I used to have a friend named Trey who played in Mako. Now he's dead to me. (laughs) Okay, so there's Mm T-R-E, T-R-E-Y, then the rare T-R-A-E. Oh, I I, I do know one That's like the girl version of Trey, right? The black version. Whoa. Oh, damn, that gets a little... It's true. You, okay. you say who you cares? Know. It's true. <laughs> no, uh, I mean I don't know anyone who who I could dispute that against. If you if somebody said hi, my name's Draymond on the phone, I would hang up the phone <laughs> because he got second place. Oh, and he's probably kicking people in the balls. Yeah, I, I it's actually insane how little empathy I have in my heart for anything that will ever happen to that guy for the rest of his life. Like he could live the pursuit of happiness. And me see uh, like a a documentary later on down the line, and I would still be like, yeah, but because of sports, fuck that guy. When they did game, what was it? Game six, maybe. Was game seven in in California, or was it in? Game seven was in California because they had the home court advantage. Okay, let's talk. Okay, so game five when the Warriors were going to maybe close it out, oh, and you that mean was testicles nine eleven. Yes, and and Draymond Green was suspended. He couldn't even enter the arena. I I kind of went back and forth on who I wanted to win the finals. The homer in me wanted the Warriors to win because they this beat the Thunder. For your so, team, sure. Exactly. But then, like, part of me wanted the Cavs to win to, like, fuck the Warriors. Mm-hmm. But then, fuck LeBron James. No, so, no, no. Eh. Anyways. Now, I will say this, though. I understand as a homer, because Norm MacDonald once said, you can't love your team without hating another team, hating everything about the 2011-2012 cap, or heat, sorry. Right. The bandwagon doesn't know uh, what year any of them were. They just know who, who won the year before. That's the jersey they buy. Yep. Now they all live in Oakland, getting gentrified. It's tight. Um, <laughs> if you really look at the big three, I mean... Obviously, it's easy to hate someone who's a better player than someone on your team because it's like, ah, oh, why isn't that guy on our team? Fuck him. Right. I get it. Right. I I subscribe to that 93% of the time. Okay. The unlikable cog in the the tr- in that that machine was Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade 0607 maybe the best performance by a shooting guard not named Michael or Kobe ever. Got a ring for it. Kind of piggybacked Shaq, but 
one center doesn't win a ring, a whole team does. I mean, he was good. Right. It was it was a really good performance. But he is just a dirty player and he he'll do he'll do things that they call like crafty veteran moves mm-hmm. where he's like someone fouls him and then he'll foul them again after the play so they react and then they get the foul called and yes that person shouldn't react but that's still just it's crooked and silly it's shady but lebron james is legitimately just like sports porn He's a video game. He is. And, and and that's why he's the king, you know, and I get all that. And I, I don't I don't hate him as much as some of my friends do. The decision was awful. Right. That was a PR nightmare. He shouldn't have handled it that way. I'm not going to defend that. I still hate the Miami Heat, too. But really, when I think about hating that team, I think about those douchey conferences and I think about Dwayne Wade being a dirty piece of garbage. And and the the way the whole decision was handled, like I remember seeing the specials on primetime TV and things like kind of douchey, just kind of like, dude, what a bunch of cake eaters. Like, what the fuck? I think that was about the time when I first finally started to realize that like narrative driven news exists in sports media as well as like bipartisan media outlets. And so I'm actually kind of thankful for that because for the most part, I just I don't look at ESPN because everything is on Twitter or on the NBA subreddit. Right. Or, you know, uh, Twitter beat writers for teams. I mean, you can find it without having to watch ESPN. And I used to watch Sports Center on mute, but um, I, I, I just can't do it anymore. You guys haven't heard my voice in the past. I don't know how long because I, I, I do not. I don't know what you're talking about. We really shouldn't get me started on basketball because yeah. this podcast okay. will get terrible. No, it's cool. I was letting you guys do your thing. Like, I, I, as we speak. And this isn't me being like too cool for sports. Like I just, I don't, I'm, I'm not, like you said, like when you were young, you were invested in like your, your soccer and basketball. And then you got into uh, skateboarding later and probably eventually like punk rock playing in bands, right? Like 13, 14 started uh, playing? Uh, whenever we moved. So, well, that's when I started playing. Um, Started playing guitar when I was 10, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, My parents uh, grew up. I I grew up going to one school district. They moved across town to another school district. And I was like a block away. Mm -hmm. But they're like, you're going to see him in two years. Shut up. Deal with it. And so instead of, you know, making a bunch of friends or whatever, I just got a crappy electric guitar and kind of I took like a couple of lessons of chords from my stepdad who bought me my first guitar. And then I just read Guitar Worlds. And I already had a background playing music because I played... uh, My mom plays piano, Mm -hmm. tried to teach me piano, but I wanted to play video games or something. And I played violin from eight years old until 16. So I already understood music and I was really good at like like hearing something and figuring out how to play it. Right. And so that really, that was pretty fun with violin and got me in trouble because I didn't want to practice. Mm-hmm. But in guitar, that's perfectly fine. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's how I learned to play by you. Like, you th- pick a song you want to hear and just keep playing it over and over. Hopefully, you're in the same tuning as yeah. they are. That's kind of something that doesn't really help. Or, or in tune. Or in tune. Find out about tabs and oh, yeah. the Game rabbit changer. hole begins. Yeah. Finding out about tabs realistically probably is one of the biggest things that changed, I guess down the road who i am because yeah. it, it was no longer like these six songs from guitar world that i could learn mm-hmm. which is how i know the santeria solo what's oh, up yeah, yeah. smoking dirt weed all right let's do it <laughs> let's do working it. at pack sun um <laughs> <laughs> oh that no you were you, i did, worked it i we don't we don't need to get into my retail history it's disgusting okay well hold on we we're mall job guys like Same, we, I, yeah. hot topic hot topic hot topic all right? of us yeah Adam Leepak needs to get in here and we can make a prayer chain. Which hot topic did you work at? <laughs> the one with Adam in uh, Sooner Fashion Mall. Oh, Sooner. Wow. Not for very long, though. I was like just barely 16 and not responsible. And after the like 30 day review or 90 day or whatever it was after working like 10 hours a week, you know, you being 16 and not understanding that they're paying you to do a job it's oh, like yeah. oh i don't give a shit i'm here like eight hours a week yeah and so their their review was like very blunt but taylor is nice but doesn't really pay attention goes right. into the back to check his phone and this that and the other and it was basically like you have 30 days to do better for a follow-up and we won't fire you or you'll be fired and so i was just like okay no it's cool and i quit and i applied in <laughs> albertson's and uh, then I think I wound up working at a bank as a teller because my mom worked at that bank. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I'm never doing this again for the rest of my life. 
That's so weird. We have kind of a similar trajectory because I worked at Hot Topic. I was a senior in high school when I got the job and it was, it was the one in Crossroads Mall and it was pretty much right when it opened. Rest in peace. I know. It's, it's sad. It's sad. Um, so I got a job there and I, I took it very seriously because I was like, this is, it's a cool job. So I want to have this job. I want to do it very well. But I would wonder, like we, I worked with some kids that were like 16, 17 or around my age or whatever. And, and after hearing you say that, I wonder like, why do they take a chance on a dumbass 16 year old kid when there's 30 year olds that need jobs and they would happily yeah, work at Hot Topic? But I think it's, it, it's like the, it's like religion and it's like the military. <laughs> You Sorry. get them young and dumb and naive and you just like, Hey man, just, uh, you know, it's, it's all about sales. You got to like, how many, like the, what, what was the thing where UPT, points, units, UPT per per units per transaction, yep. bump up those UPTs, sell some buttons, sell some stickers. That's why we put all this shit right here, guys. It's, yeah. It's, it's a great company to work for. And then when the fucking corporate dudes come in, they all look like Guy Fieri in those fucking giant shirts. Like who is this asshole? Oh, he's the regional manager. He looks like a fucking tool. And this is supposed to be like a really cool place for me to work at. I don't want to be that guy. Well, it's not really cool. Like it, Erica and I, when, when we go to the mall, we'll usually pop in Hot Topic just to have a little, we, we make the horseshoe. Mm -hmm. the, nostalgia, out. Yeah, the nostalgia run. But it's like, I remember it being packed when I worked there, but now it's like ridiculously. Like, oh yeah. Like certain people can't go in there. It used to be a sleeper pick for like the best place to buy really cheap records on wax. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of really good rap records from the one in uh, Norman because they they bought a shitload of them. And then it started to make the the transition from mall goth to like 2005 Friendster scene kid. Right. And so they had like, you know, like five or six shelves of stuff that no one was going to buy. Mm -hmm. You know, all these people want to listen to Thursday. They don't have any idea what Enter the 36 Chambers is. Sold mm -hmm. the shit out of white belts, though. Lots of white belts. I remember the first time I compromised my integrity for a job was <laughs> upselling an Evanescent CD to somebody. <laughs> uh, upselling. Uh, yeah. Is yeah, that possible? No, yeah, fuck yeah, it is. They were buying something else stupid, and I was like... Oh, you're an idiot. I do buy this. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, my manager at the time was like, if you sell three of those, I'll buy you lunch. And I was like, ah, uh, challenge accepted. Yeah. Only sold one, and after I did it, I was like... Feel bad about yourself? Like, I can't believe I made someone purchase that. Did you still get Chick-fil-A, though? Uh, Sabaros. Oh, we I, I just paid for it. Yeah, greasy, terrible pizza. That That will be a recurring theme down the line in my life. <laughs> So you said you were, you were raised with by a religious family. Did you have to go to church? Were you raised in church or uh, was it more of just like a, a household type deal? Preacher, uncle, deacon, grandfather, grandfather, no longer involved with the church. Is the uncle the, the skateboarder? No. <laughs> no Cause I, that would have been a really fucking like, skateboard like, preacher. Like uncle. the bald one. Yeah. yeah. Isn't there a bald one that like yeah. was cool and like was well, a skateboard? He was in Biodome. Is that the same one? Yeah. The one is in Steven? Biodome. Yeah, he was a he did that skateboard. He like it was like a Christian X Games tour that he did. Take that, nineteen ninety date of birth. Still yeah. picked up a Baldwin reference. <laughs> Gosh, nineteen ninety. It's weird because it, you're talking about guitar tabs and things like that. It's like if if we were to go back and forth and talk about those Guitar World magazines, I'm I'm sure that the songs are very different from different eras. Like like for me, it was like Smashing Pumpkins today. Oh my God. B Bush come down. Like stuff like that was like really hip when I was starting to play guitar. Ironically, the first one that I bought that my mom bought me a subscription for for Christmas using the insert out of none other than corn. Really? Didn't learn those songs. Didn't have a baritone. Didn't care to. Meth tuning. Garbage. But <laughs> learned the first solo to Number of the Beast. Still know all of it. Mm. Not really proud of that. I right. mean pretty reputable it's it's one that you could throw out and people would be like i know that song and that that solo is cool but they wouldn't be like oh the one that starts on the 15th fret like no one yeah. besides like people who are like on the the spectrum are going to be like i know exactly what he's talking about you right. should try that with um smooth by santana oh, oh you mean uh the smash grammy hit single featuring rob thomas of matchbox 20 oh yeah solid plug so so okay here's the thing with smooth is it is this like an internet phenomenon that people think it is? It's, no, it's, it's appreciating the greatest piece of music ever assembled by record executives. There's a Facebook group that is nothing but 
t- people talking about that. And if it comes like, like if I'm in Hobby Lobby taking a shit and it comes on in the bathroom, like somebody would like record while it's going on. And or like, you know, you'd be in the grocery store in your car at a yeah. sporting event or something like that. There's a whole like underbelly underground of people. But who is like, it? <laughs> Is it like ironic? Oh, it's definitely ironic. Most of those people who are making like the macroed images and memes about it are my age or younger and probably honestly only remember hearing the horns and that solo start. And then the rest of it is just kind of white noise. So they don't remember the, they don't remember the TRL premiere of that music video, which I do. Totally remember the TRL premiere. All I'm saying is I could better, I could change my life to better suit your mood, you know? Well, well, speaking of, uh, Santana did the uh, Star Step Spangled Banner. I totally fucked that up. The Star Spangled Banner, I think on the first game of the finals. Did you see that? No, but that sounds fucking horrendous. It was, and he kind of looked like Gallagher. It, it was like it as bad Gallagher. as Flea doing it on the bass. Oh, Jesus. Did you see I that? I thought that was kind of tight. Oh, dude. come on. Uh, hey, man, I'm a I'm a funk bass fan. No, I I'm not here to say that Flea is not good at bass. Okay. But as far as that stuff goes, even like the only guy I can think of that does that that I actually like, rest in peace, uh Cliff Burton. Yeah. It's just it's, it's cent- not meant for the bass. Well, it's centered in the gimmick being he's doing that on a bass. Like if you do it as a fill, like have you seen the Metallica DVD from Oakland in like 86? Where they're all like, it's like like a, a VHS rip. Is it the one where they're playing like the big outdoor stage? Yeah, they, they have they have like ice chests behind them. Watching yeah. Cliff Burton do like bass solo fills is like musician porn for me, and I love that he did that. And not a lot of people do that, and it's really badass. But when it's something like that, where it's like, who's someone really fucking kitschy and local? that we can throw out onto this floor to do the national anthem without singing. It's always like, this guy can do it on a xylophone. Right. <laughs> Great. Oh, it's funny. Cause we were going to dinner the other night, Eric and I, and I was trying to explain, like, I'm, I'm a fan of Sean Lennon, John, mm-hmm. John Lennon's son. That's sure. not Julian, like not the eighties kid, but the psychedelic nineties. The one kid. that he neglected. Yes. Well, and both of them, but more, less, more recently. Yeah. Uh, and I was trying to explain his new mu- musical endeavor, and it's called the Lennon Claypool. Yeah, Ugh, you can that. stop right there. I will because I can't remember the rest of it. But I was trying to sell this to my wife, and she was like, "Is Les Claypool the guy that's like?" And I was <laughs> yes, like, "Yes, yep, that's him." I was like, "I was like, but it, but it's not it's not like that. He doesn't play slap bass on it." And she was like, "I don't give a shit." <laughs> <laughs> In a microcosm, that is me and Emily's music conversation every time in the car it'll be like us driving somewhere and uh usually it'll be someone who's in another band that my band has booked or played with and i'm like yeah this is evan from vacation this is his other band i met him playing this and she's like okay cool which i've learned over time is her being really nice but saying who gives a fucking shit yeah. stop talking <laughs> i could care less watch the road i don't care <laughs> yeah her life is in your hands dude is that a is that an Evanescence lyric? Man, I really wish I knew the lyrics to that song because I would have locked that eye contact and sang the entire first stanza of the the only song they wrote. The, the Wake Me Up? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Goofy one on YouTube? No. That's the worst thing I've seen on the internet probably I heard this about year. that today. Really? Yeah, someone was talking about that today. I actually heard about that right around the time I heard about the... Uh, Santana featuring Rob Thomas Facebook group. So yeah, weird. Full circle. Full circle. Life is a life is a circle. Speaking of full circles, should we bring this one to a full circle? I think it's about time. Okay. Uh, but but before we do, so okay, I, I wanted to go back and ask about the church thing. Yeah. What denomination? Uh, Southern Baptist. Me too. Same God's mob. Same Z's. God's mob. All dude. the way around. Did you, so were, were you forced to go to church? Um, early on, yes. But when I was uh, a little bit older, my mom got more lenient with it. This is in Norman, right? Yeah. Okay. We used to go to Trinity Baptist Church. And then after that, I mean, I, I remember, I remember the first time that I was like, eh, God probably doesn't exist, but it was something I struggled with forever because they indoctrinate you early with the fear of hell. Oh, for sure. And it's like it's fear mongering and it's appeal to emotion fallacies left and right. It's just really fucking obnoxious and childish and abusive and gaslighting is, I think, the term that, as an adult. now. That, that's how I was, quote unquote, saved. I was six years old 
and uh, it was from it was from a message. The preacher just kept fucking pushing hell down my throat. I'm like, I don't want to go to hell. And you go up front like, eh. and you cry because you're scared as and fuck. And you're six. Yeah, you're yeah. six. It's, it's just childish Anyways, continue. and shitty. Sorry, my bad. Oh just, no, it's all good. Basically, we we were in a we were in science class in sixth grade. Isn't that how it always starts? Yes. And we're talking about the primordial ooze theory. Mm-hmm. Just in passing, I mean, obviously they're not teaching that in Oklahoma public schools because Jesus. Right. But right. Um, I remember my grandma picked me up that day, and we we're driving home, and I was talking about, oh, we learned about this and this, and you know, now that I think about it, it makes sense that that happened because the seven days of creation is plenty of time for the microorganisms in that ooze to, you know, to evolve into whatever. Pulls over side of the road and is like god's word is what happened and i was i remember it being like eh, 10 11 and thinking nope and that that's kind of the same crossroads that i came to and and just for the record i love your grandma she's a wonderful woman she is a very nice yes, lady but but people who believe so blindly it just you know as an adult like as an adult with a somewhat you know, evolved mind. I don't mean evolved as in like I'm above anybody, but like yeah, evolved no, at my You're not going Richard Dawkins way. on anyone. No, no, no. I just mean evolved from where I was when sure, I was a baby boy. To believe in something like that so blindly, like don't you just want to shake your sweet it's, grandma and just be like, what the fuck, grandma? Like, I go back and forth with it because the older I get, my opinions don't get any less strong, but I start to consider like how much of an like fedora atheism is the douchiest shittiest thing on the planet and like they're worse than most christians like there's a big difference between being like listen your doctrine of beliefs is, uh stigmatizes homosexuality teaches women to be subservient to men which is inherently sexist and it is generally not accepting of scientific fact which is fucking I ignorant absurd yeah. To me, yeah and there's a difference between that and just being like can God create a rock he can't pick up? Which is a, the the seven questions or whatever is fun to play with douchebags. But whenever you really like unironically do it just to shake someone's faith, which most of the time they have because they don't know what else to do in a bleak, dismal world. Right. Can be just as prickish sure. as like the Westboro Baptist Church. Well, sure. Even yeah. though the Westboro Church is way extreme, it's still kind of in the same. It, it just comes down to extremism in anything. Sure. When, you, when you get to a point of blind, like being a blind zealot, that is where the issue occurs, regardless of what the faith is. You know, because I don't know, like religion to me is kind of like being a vegetarian or a vegan. They're going to tell you all about it. No, um, they, you know, it, it's a personal, intimate lifestyle decision. Everyone should respect it and everyone sure. should leave everyone the fuck alone to live theirs however they want to do it. Amen. I don't believe in God, but some people believe in God who are really nice people in sure. my family. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, my uncle runs a Christian orphanage that takes drug addled kids out of broken homes. I get the good things come out of Christianity. Absolutely. But also some of my best friends are gayer than the day is long. And I would rather hang out with them than anyone in any church literally ever any time on earth. Well, a lot of the time it's like, like you, you, you know, I'm just picturing like the, the white trash Southern Christian. And it's like, you know, it's like Muslims are stupid. <laughs> Fuck them. It's like, <laughs> You sound just as hateful as these people that yeah. a lot of Muslims are fine. I would say the majority of Muslim people are fine. Totally. We well, can do branch the majority of everyone. The majority of Christians are okay. They're is fine. Fine. But it's it's these extreme people that really fuck it up for everybody else. It's just a oh, one half for million. Sad. Yeah. Well, and then then when it, when it becomes like okay again, not to get on a fucking religious topic. I'm sorry totally, about I, that. That's my no, fault. No, it's totally fine. I totally agree with you that it, it's, it, I have no problem. If that's what gets you through the day, man, life is bleak and it's meaningless. And, uh, eventually we're all just going to die and, and, and nothing's going to happen. So whatever you can hold on to that makes it better for you, fucking go for well, it. Well, and especially if you're like, you know, coming from like, like an addict standpoint, cause you know, I don't need to pontificate on the religious overtones sure. of the, of the 12 step program, right. but that indoctrinates a lot of people and it and in theory if you followed all of the tenants outside of the oppressive ones it's not the worst thing ever treat people okay yeah 
uh don't eat shellfish i guess i don't know who gives a shit um <laughs> don't kill don't steal don't it's basically don't be a dick maybe also throw don't rape on the commandments that'd be good that'd probably be a good one he skipped over that one <laughs> yeah that shit's weird uh, but I, I wonder if back then that the r word didn't even exist because it just happened all the time well, well that's yeah, it why wasn't I saw that. it was, it was, con- was, it was considering ma- that was your wife when you penetrated someone that's marrying them yeah, there's so many so crazy, totally fucked, fine. awful things about religion that, like, it's almost a black hole to look into. It's almost not even worth it to start going down the rabbit For hole. For sure. Well, my thing I was going to go into was it's pol- keep that out of politics. If we can just take those two out of it and just... It should be totally free to do whatever the fuck you want to do. However, I should have a choice. If I'm going to vote for somebody, I should be able to vote for someone who has my back. But not everyone has your back. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, that's a good place to end the episode. I so, guess so. Taylor, we Shit. didn't even talk about fucking stand-up comedy we didn't talk about comedy we didn't talk about filaments we didn't talk about i don't do any of those things they all sound terrible just kidding filaments.bandcamp.com and do you, do you have any comedy things coming up or are you doing anything um no i actually don't have anything comedy wise okay. coming up uh filaments is playing on the 24th of june which i think people listening to this will already miss we're playing with cherry death on july 8th at the speakeasy okay and then I believe August 16th, maybe. I'll have to double check that. But sometime in August, we're playing with this band called Culture Abuse at uh, the 89th Street. Cons- uh, cool. uh, the, <laughs> the conservatory. The, yeah, <laughs> sorry, Nick. It's the conservatory. Um, it's just easier to say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, too many words. Keep it simple, stupid. But uh, yeah, Filaments is a band. Some of us are in other bands. Uh, listen to Crutch. Well, check this out. We're going to play some Filaments right now. Oh, God. Oh, God.